just making this laptop bag and I come up with a new handle design. I thought maybe I'll share it. Other people might be looking for something different to do. So I've done it flat on the ends and then rounded to hold onto. And I guess the point of difference is I've done a baseball stitch here rather than um, having a seam line along there that's uncomfortable. So this is perfectly round and even two of them together feels pretty good. So I had already done this side, but it was a bit un neat so I pulled it apart to do it again. The thing I've done differently is where I've used lining leather there so that you can make it nice and neat once it's finished. Uh, I've just skived that down to virtually nothing so the transition's a bit smoother. It's had a lump before. And what I've done to make the handle round is glue together a few pieces of leather and skive the edges down to make it roundish. Just glued in in the center there so that it stays in the right spot. But I think um, having the ends free makes the baseball stitch a bit easier to do. I'll show you how to do that. So the same as just a saddle stitch, I find or found on the first handle that about four times the length of the handle was about right for the thread. And what I'm going to do is stitch around one side of the handle with the saddle stitch. When I get to here, I'll do the baseball stitch until I get there and then finish off on the other side and then just come back and complete the other bit. It can be tidied up underneath the baseball stitched part. So I know there's about a thousand other videos on YouTube on how to saddle stitch, so I won't uh, bother you too much with that. Uh, but just a few things that I've picked up in the short time that I've been doing leather is that you can make neat or unneat saddle stitches. And I'll just quickly show you what exactly I mean by that and what I've learned. So I've started off the saddle stitch there and I like to work facing the front so that I can see what I'm doing there. So I'll bring both of those through to the front. And to make sure that you keep them fairly neat, the top one here, uh, you can see the diamond shape on there. So I'll pull that down towards there and then make sure that I always bring the top needle back in above that one. And then as you pull it through, pull up on an angle so you can see there that you've really highlighted the diamond shape on there and bring it back through. Same here, so bring that one across and down. So to the bottom end of the diamond and then this one through on the top. So it's stacked on the top there and it just makes for a much neater thing. I'm going to finish off the thing here. I'll probably fast forward this so you don't have to watch the whole thing. I'm pretty much up to where I want to go from the saddle stitch to the um, baseball stitch. And so the way we're going to do that is start going a crossway, so joining the two sides together. So I reckon just get one more lap of the saddle stitch. So I've got that one there. So the baseball stitch you go over this side and under this side so we need to match up where the holes are so that's on the edge so we've got one two three four five one two three four five so if we go from that one the fifth hole. And 
and I've just dropped that one under there. Let's get that out. So from there, they should pull together like that. So with the saddle stitch, you go back through the same hole with the baseball stitch. It's every second hole, so it's only got one strand through each one. So we're going to the next next hole along with the opposite strand. Pull that through and back the other way. So we don't go back through the same hole, we go through the next hole. And from this point, now that we've got strands on both sides, as we pull it tight, you can see it comes in together. So I've got a little bit to go before we need to trap that bit in. So we'll just keep going. So to stop it unraveling, so pull it as tight as you can and just hold a finger onto that one that seems to stay in quite well. So next hole. And just hold that one down and we can tighten that more once we've gone back through the next one. Uh, this is quite awkward doing it while I'm filming, but if I get it into a better position, it can actually go along a bit quicker. So you can see each time you do every second stitch, pull it tight, lock that one down and it doesn't come undone. Should clean up my bench, you know. And we're probably up to where that needs to go in. Next one, perhaps. And if you can't get it through, try it from the other side first. And you can usually see where it's come through. Follow it back through. And pull it tight as we go. Lock that one down. And we can sandwich that one in. And you should be able to still see the holes. This is the same punching as it would be for a saddle stitch. So nothing different there. But going from the inside and pull it tight. This is why I undid this one and redid it because you could see the lining there and hopefully you can pull it tight enough to cover that up this time around. See, I pulled it tight there and I've covered that over now. So lock it down into the next hole, not to the same hole. Just hold that down so it doesn't unravel too much. So not the same hole, the second hole, or next, next hole in line. If it doesn't go through, try it from the outside, make a bit of a gap and should go through and pull it tight lock it in i'm just going to ignore the camera and try and get this done So you can see I'm almost at the end of the 
center core bit. So we want to cover that as tight as we can because uh, last time there was a bit of a bump. So make sure you keep some tension on so it doesn't open up. It's usually easier coming out of the baseball stitch to be able to keep it tight than it is going into it. You seem to have fairly good leverage here with all of the stitching that you've already done to pull against. And you can see that it's got a bit of a twist in it. That's pretty normal when you do a baseball stitch. But that's part of the reason I don't glue the core in there because it does make it easier just to twist it back into shape after you've finished. So nothing to worry about at this stage. So I've gone back into the doubled up leather now. So I'll see how tight I can get that. If I can get it in the hole, there we go. So you can see a little bit of a gate there at this stage, but hopefully another few stitches we can pull that tight. Let's try and keep the tension on there. So we did five stitches before this. So we need to do five stitches as we end it. Before we go back to the saddle stitch. So let me just count that up. So that's where the lining leather starts in one, two, three, four. Let's go one more. Or is that it? I think that's it. So you can see here I've done half a saddle stitch, but instead of going back across, I'm just a uh, half of a baseball stitch, I'm going to go back into the saddle stitch. So you can still use the saddle stitch to pull the baseball stitch tight. So same again, just keep that tight on the edge. And as we said at the start, we want to go back to that diamond shape. So pull it across and follow the diamond there. So above the previous stitch and I'm just going to try and hold these tight because we don't want the baseball stitch to lose the tension so over and back and then we should be able to pull that tight and that should hold now so you can see that the saddles the baseball stitch is finished quite neat and when we come back to finish off this other side I'll show you how you can tighten that up a little bit more so I'll just finish off the saddle stitch on this side. So that's the stitching done, but as you can see, it's very twisted. Uh, not to worry, it does untwist quite easily. Just need to massage it back into its place. Let's try and get the seam relatively lined up. And you can see there already that's starting to sit right. I'll tweak that a little bit as we go. So we've stitched all the way around saddle stitch to baseball stitch back out to saddle stitch. These parts here, really it's just aesthetics. Obviously it's going to hold the two layers of leather together. Um, and when we get back up to here, we can use that just to give a little bit extra strength to where it divides after the 
baseball stitch and tied it up just a little bit. Uh, this side here, pretty happy with that. A little bit of a lump there, but I might be able to hammer that a little bit later on and get a little bit of an improvement. I'll just finish these sides off and I'll show you what I do once I get to the top. Actually, I remembered as I was doing that, I started from this end, not from this end. Uh, main reason for that is that then where you start is always going to be a little bit neater and where you end and end up tying it off or burning it is going to be hidden under the belt there anyway. So we'll start from the top. So we wanted to do this side and we do want to tie it in going straight across. I think this is what I did last time. So. I reckon that's actually pretty good. So it pulls it in a little bit tighter there. And as we did after the baseball stitch on the other side, the saddle stitch can be used to tighten it and pull it in. So it pulls that across. And as I said, I do prefer to stitch from the outside so I can see what's happening with the layering of the thread. Might be wondering why I didn't do this before I attached the handle but as you can see down here I've wanted to join that in neatly there so it needs to go over the loop before I put it in and this part is all attached with the main seam of the bag I probably could have attached this afterwards done the whole handle set up afterwards but in this case I didn't so <laughs> hence the reason it looks quite awkward and trust me it is as awkward as it looks So that's one side done, keeps it in relatively neat and I'll just finish off the other side. So I'll just give you a tour of the bag. Uh, the reason I did the baseball stitch is like we said, wherever it sits, it seems to be quite comfortable. You don't get a seam sticking in the end. It's quite nice. Uh, so this one I made as a laptop bag. My wife has requested it, but we'll see. And it's got a zip up inner pocket and two outside uh, pockets around that. So it fits this, this is a 13 inch MacBook, it would fit a 40 inch computer quite easily, as you can see on there. And I've done zip up with zip tabs here just to make it a little bit easier to handle as you do it. Um, debating whether to put a crossbody handle on there or whether it's just a hand carry. Let's put some rings on and a, a loop. So I'm going to coat this in leather conditioner. That's got my go-to finishing product now. And if you're interested in buying one of these, go to our website at priestcraft.com.au. I might put this one on. Thanks for watching.